you have a session that looks at the, the line mode browser. What is that and what happened to it? Well, the line mode browser was not the first browser that Tim Berners-Lee created, but in fact the second browser. Um, you could kind of call it a minimum viable product. Uh, so the first browser that was created at CERN was a GUI interface. It uh, rendered uh, not just text, but images and whatnot. Uh, but it only ran on the next platform. And so uh, Tim rightfully figured in order to get this out to the public, more widespread, we need to create something that's a little more accessible to people. Um, and so the line mode browser was created as a text-only interface um, for the web, and uh, that was distributed uh, by CERN for a number of years. Um, it eventually turned into the lib www library, mm -hmm. which form the basis of a number of, of browser experiments. Um, so in a way, it's still kind of out there, but um, just as a, a remnant of what it once was. Now, what do you feel that developers and designers can learn from this browser? Well, since the line mode browser really was the way in which the web became popular, um, you know, the, despite the lack of images and the rich interface, um, the web still took off because of that early experience that people had. Um, it really placed the emphasis on the content, um, which was really Tim Berners-Lee, uh, that was his goal anyway, mm -hmm. um, an information management system. So I think it reminds, it should remind developers and designers that the, the focus should be on the content that's being presented in making information accessible to the human beings that need to uh, receive it. So the, the line mode, mode browser, I'm going to keep st stepping on that, I know I will, but w that was the first one that was universally accessible, is that correct? Well, it was accessible in the sense that it compiled, it was written in C, so it compiled on sure. pretty much any Unix-based operating system, and it was ported easily to Windows and to Mac. Um, but it was text only. Uh, so depending on what kind of interface you were running, depending on whether or not it was uh, universally accessible um, from a uh, disabilities perspective, um, certainly I, I would assume, I don't know for sure, but if you were running it on an X terminal that had some kind of voicing capability, mm -hmm. it could have in fact been accessible. Um, but the fact that it was a text only interface, I'm assuming that if you were on just a, a dummy terminal, um, you, you'd still need sight in order to interface with it. In, in terms of accessibility across platforms though, how does the line mode browser compare to the modern browsers of today? I mean, was it easier to access? Was it easier to get in front of? Well, that's um, an interesting question. I, certainly, if you needed to be able to compile it, uh, there was right. a barrier to entry there. Sure. Um, but if you make the assumption that people already had it pre-installed on a system, and all they needed to do was know how to type in the command and, mm -hmm. and how to format a URL, which in and of itself was one of the inventions we got with the web, um, so that was potentially also new to folks, um, You know, it, it was really just a matter of knowledge um, and, and probably fewer barriers to access. Um, you know, I think that, that today, uh, where we've added CSS and JavaScript and images and so many other um, uh, rich media to the web, um, those have really kind of taken away from that text-only um, experience. Uh, so, you know, it's potentially less accessible, but um, if we know how to use the tools correctly, same thing, you know, would be true back then. If you knew how to use the tools correctly, it was perfectly accessible, same thing now. This is kind of a weird question. Do you feel like there's a nostalgia for the, the old tech-centric web? I think there is a nostalgia, and, and having been there at the time when this stuff was being created, I'm even feeling it myself, <laughs> just in terms of a reminder of how far we've come. Um, but in my day-to-day -day experience working with um, developers and designers who are, are pretty new, um, you know, having only been in their careers for three, five years, even people who've only been at this for 10 years, um, they don't realize how far we've come in some cases and don't really know what the early history was like. So um, I think they are eager to kind of hear these stories and uh, learn a bit more about things like the line mode browser. What is the biggest web or coding problem that you're running into right now? Well, I think right now, um, I'm seeing a huge focus on the developer experience. So a number of years ago, we really shifted away from talking about user interfaces to user experience. And now I'm seeing a, a nice focus on the developer experience and how, much, how important that is it, to creating um, good products and good interfaces. Um, you know, developers, I think, are oftentimes the low person on the totem pole. Um, and so they end up having to deal with whether it be shortened timelines, 
because projects need to get out by a certain date um, or changing requirements. Um, it all kind of lands on their shoulders in order to still make the magic happen, so to speak. Um, but developers have really kind of formed a, a tight community. They're producing many frameworks and tools to help one another um, do their work more easily. Um, and they're really thinking about how they can make their day-to-day -day experience doing what they do better. And I, I just love that focus. I think it'll make people a lot happier and keep them in the industry for longer. Somewhat related to that, what was the biggest issue you were running into five years ago? And how has it been addressed if it has been addressed? So five years ago, we were still in the uh, mode of browsers being released every few months mm. or years. Um, the Evergreen browser really didn't come along until about 2010, 2011. Um, and so that was a very different landscape from what it is today. Back then, pe developers, designers too, were still very focused on what features were missing and when might they get them. And so we were all very uh, focused on how we could use polyfills and libraries to kind of fill in the gaps um, and deliver whatever wasn't available to us. Now that we're getting new browsers every few weeks, um, it's actually a different problem. We're trying to figure out how we can keep up with all the new features that are coming out. Um, but it, it's certainly not the same challenge in that we're spending a lot of time and effort engineering solutions um, to problems that we know w today would be you know, addressed in a, in a matter of weeks, probably. Last question for you. What people or projects are you following these days? That's a great question. I'm not really sure what I'm following. <laughs> <laughs> I think mostly I'm just looking for um, people who are excited about where things are going mm -hmm. um, and just trying to tap into that sort of community spirit. Um, a lot of things are changing in the W3C also. I'm, I'm really excited to see more women be included on the architecture group of the W3C. So just to kind of hear what kind of conversations are happening, um, I think it's just it's a very interesting time. Great. Well, thank you for being with us. Thank you.